citizen scheme and service delivery all the interaction of citizens across the country with the government is either to avail services things like driving license getting a property register domicile certificate marriage certificate and so on or for availing specific schemes which are benefits that that the government provide either in the form of cash or kind so this could be insurance different kind of pensions uh, scholarships food grants and so on but what's the real situation when it comes to citizen scheme and service delivery across the country let's try and understand that from the perspective of a citizen firstly the awareness of government schemes is fairly limited across the, across the country so a citizen doesn't know what are the schemes that she can avail even if the awareness is there one doesn't know whether the person is eligible for that particular scheme or service or not because there is different eligibility criteria for different schemes even if one is eligible one doesn't know where to go and apply because some schemes are available and some services are available at the gram panchayat level some are available at the tehsil office some is available in the block office some are available from one department some are available in different departments something at the district headquarters so you don't know where to go and apply if you even if you land up at the right place the process of application is fairly complex and the documentary requirement is such that one ends up depending on a doubt or an agent and finding was an application made then often it becomes a black box you don't know whether it's getting approved it's getting rejected when will the result come the situation is not very different for a government official it's not very easy for a government official either so if applications come from different sources the government official doesn't have visibility on the state of of applications under him or her and as a result of that is not able to hold his team accountable for the processing and then subsequently a lot of public dealing happens because citizens come with specific request to check on their applications and so on it wastes a lot of time in avoidable public dealing and eventually the, the government official doesn't know whether the citizen are satisfied with the services that his or her district or his or her department are, are providing or not so that's the prevailing situation across the country and the situation was not very different in the state of haryana in the year 2017 and that's when this was discussed at length in a meeting with the leadership in the state and it was decided to fundamentally transform the situation in the state of haryana and as a result of that what was born was a program to transform its scheme and service service delivery in the state called antyodaya sarv the responsibility of conceptualizing designing and then catalyzing the implementation of antyodaya sarv was given to a team of professionals in the chief minister's office called the digital haryana cell on the first step was to figure out just how many such schemes and services exist since nobody had a specific idea of how many how many such schemes and services are there in the state so after some diagnosis it was figured out there are some 550 plus g2c government to citizen schemes and services across some 36 government government departments that existed at that time now how do you streamline the delivery of such a large number of schemes and services after a lot of thinking the root cause of most of the challenges was identified as the excessive interaction of the citizen with the department officials for availing these schemes and services and if somehow this interface could be minimized and over time eliminated then the service delivery could be actually streamlined with this macro goal what was envisaged is there will be ultimately only three ways through which a citizen should be applying for any scheme or service either if the citizen is tech savvy enough you know, should be able to sit at home and apply online for any of these 550 plus schemes or services second the citizen should be able to go to a nearby kiosk a common services center which is usually there in various gram panchayats and in the municipal wards which are led by entrepreneurs they are not government run centers they are driven by entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs should be able to charge a small fee 10 rupees 20 rupees 30 30 rupees to get a citizen and assist a citizen in applying for any scheme or service and thirdly citizen should be able to go through these designated 115 saral kendras which were envisaged as state of the art facilities where anyone can come and apply for any of the 550 scheme or services of any of the 36 36 different departments for these three touch points to be enabled for the citizens it was extremely important that all of these schemes and services come on one common integrated online platform right so with this broad strategy work began in mission mode in 2017 on two fronts on creating this online platform where everything is integrated and secondly on streamlining streamlining the citizen touch points first talk about the online platform after initial diagnosis it was figured out that the technology maturity of different schemes and services is very very different there were large number of schemes and services which are completely offline 
everything from application to processing to final delivery was happening you know on pen and paper there were some services which were which had a back end database everything was happening offline but a data was database was maintained online there were several of them which were partially online the application would come online sometimes the final final certificate would be delivered online but all the back end processing was still offline and there were hardly any which were online end to end now what's the typical response in such a situation the typical answer in the government setup is to kind of say let's get a private technology company a technology vendor which can help in digitizing all of these schemes and services now while that while, while that's the straight line answer the challenge is that it reduces the ownership of the government departments it becomes a project or a program of that company as opposed to something that's owned by the government departments so therefore a lot of time was spent to see is this something within the government that can be leveraged for this and that's when the team landed on to something called service plus it was a architecture or a or a framework that was owned within the government at the national informatic center or the nic and the and the idea was to say that everything that's already online should just seamlessly integrate with the service plus platform so we don't do away with the legacy systems we retain them we just integrate them with this this common platform and things which are offline schemes and services which are offline that they should, we should be able to quickly configure them uh, onto this platform so service plus was identified as that anchor for creating the onto this sort of platform and then a team a large team was created 10 members from government of india nic which were allocated who were who had built service plus a 20 member team from nic haryana which were to anchor the entire online platform and two to three members from each of the 36 different departments they were allocated and the responsibility was to get on the get the schemes and services of their department onto this common platform therefore this large team was created and there was extensive coordination that happened across this team over a period of one year and in record time in fact earlier than it was planned all the 550 plus schemes and services could be brought onto the onto this server platform so this was on the online platform front all of this delivery was extremely timeline timely as i said extremely low cost almost zero cost because the existing manpower within the system was leveraged to do this it had a strong technology architecture as i explained it was it was extremely configurable architecture uh there was a lot of capacity building that happened within the government departments because the government departments were then self responsible for getting their schemes and services onto this platform and there was full ownership of the entire platform inside of the of, by the departments it was not seen as somebody else's product or somebody else's platform but something that everyone felt they owned parallel in parallel work happened on the citizen touch point front as well so as i said earlier there were three ways in which, which it was envisaged the citizens could apply one was an online platform once the once the platform was ready it could be easily enabled then the common services centers these were already existing kiosks across the entire state 6000 of them uh, the only thing that had to happen was to technology enable them technologically enable them to provide these 550 schemes and services which was done the biggest amount of work had to happen to was to establish these saral kendras the state of the art facilities almost like visa centers spread across the entire state at the tehsil level subdivision level at the district level they had to be created and they had to be kind of established so again work happened in mission mode on this uh, over a period of one year layouts were created buildings were identified which could be the renovated or constructed uh, 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 for the saral kings budget was approved uh, construction began training of staff uh, which were to man these centers that happened operational guidelines were issued operations were started and very closely the operations were monitored over a period of time this was a typical layout uh, of a saral kendra a citizen could enter go to a help desk uh, where somebody would explain that what is the eligibility for a particular scheme and service what's the documentary requirement would give the person a token the person would wait in the waiting area once the token number is kind of flashed on the screen would enter into the service area in the service area will go to a single counter where the end to end processing of that scheme or service would happen and that also for any of the 550 schemes or services across the 36 departments so this how the typical layout was this is how the help desk would look like this is how the waiting area would look like this is how the count uh, the token would come on the screen and you then you enter the service area and the service area on a single kind of window everything is uh, 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 processed and all the functioning of the saral kings were were tracked across 60 plus quality parameters over a period of one year to make sure it provides a seamless experience to the citizens additionally there was a saral helpline uh, uh, the saral helpline was a was a toll free number anyone could call this number 
and the operators there would help with eligibility as well as explaining where's the nearest uh, common service center or the nearest Saral Kendra where a citizen couldn't go. So as I said, work happened over a period of around 12 months in mission mode on both the online platform as well as the citizen touch points. And this was a multi-departmental and multi-disciplinary kind of an effort where all the 30, 30 plus departments of the state government were involved, all the 22 districts were involved, the National Informatics Center was involved and multiple other entities of the government. And all of this was anchored in the Chief Minister's office, which was supported by the Digital Haryana Cell and the Chief Minister's Good Governance Associates program, the CM Fellowship program in the state. Saral was first introduced as a concept in September of 2017 during the Digital Haryana Summit. Uh, and in December of 2018, Good Governance Day, 25th of December 2018, is when the full system and the full kind of transformed service delivery mechanism in the state was uh, launched. What has it led to? What has it meant for the citizens? So today, this extensive awareness of different government schemes and services in the citizens on account of Saral and the outreach that has happened as part of Saral. There's a helpline uh, where more than one lakh calls, queries come every month uh, for understanding different elements of different schemes and where to go and apply. Uh, so there's a helpline uh, that's operational. There are three touch points as I talked about earlier and more than five lakh applications come through these touch points every month. If a citizen has to go to a Saral Kendra, it's an extremely convenient experience because there's a help desk which helps you with your documents then there's a waiting area, there's a, there's a very uh, best-in-class facility that's provided there. It's a single window clearance that happens. For 300, more than 300 schemes and services, there's absolutely no interface with any government official. Uh, only some schemes or services which require a physical verification as part of eligibility. They, that's where the interface comes in, but for more than 300, there's absolutely zero interface with any government official uh, for processing of, of, of the application. Citizens get updates at every step of the process uh, in terms of where their application is and when is it likely to get processed. More than 15 lakh SMSs go every month. Citizens can also go through the Antrodicural platform and track the status of their application at a very, very micro level, almost like an e-commerce website uh, uh, to say, okay, who has approved it? Where is it going next? How much time is it likely to take and so on? And at the end of the entire thing, once the application is completely processed and the benefit is kind of uh, given, then a feedback call goes to the citizen and through more than one crore feedback calls, the average rating of the entire system and the entire kind of service delivery process in the state is 4.315. So the life of the citizen is completely transformed since Antyodhya Saral has kind of come into being two and a half, three years back. The situation is also very similar and situation is kind of, the, the life has become much easier and better for the government officials as well. Firstly, 100% of the processing is now online. There's no need to maintain any physical files. It's taken a behavioral change to get there, but today all the processing is completely online. This 100% visibility to the government official of all the pending applications in his or her jurisdiction, which has also meant that there's more than 85% of applications today get closed within the right to service timelines. And these timelines have also been made stringent over time. Uh, and aspirational over time, 85% of applications are within the right to service timeline. Some officials, when there's huge pendencies under them, also get SMS alerts, which says that this is the kind of pendency under them and they, 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 they should pay, they should account for it and they should kind of address that uh, on priority. There's a whole lot of accountability in the entire system. All departments, all districts have a Saral score and reviews happen across the hierarchy in the government on the basis of this Saral score, which is a composite score for service delivery. And this significantly reduced public dealing, avoidable public dealing on, for officials on the ground, because there's an automatic grievance reducible system through which any grievances related to service delivery are handled online. So the public dealing has significantly come down. So life of an official in Haryana also looks much better today than it was uh, in the pre-Saral days. Both these impact, the impact on the citizen as well as the impact on the officials is also reflected in numbers. Uh, so there are many, many schemes and services for which applications, the beneficiaries have become 2x or 3x after the introduction of, after the process has been simplified to this extent. As I said earlier, 85% of the applications get processed within the right to service timeline. There have been 4.6 crore applications that have come since Saral has become active. Many schemes and services have seen half the processing time reduced by half. Many have seen processing time reduced by one third. 
So data also backs the experience that is seen on the ground uh, uh, when it comes to scheme and service delivery. What more? When COVID happened in 2020 and then again 2021, Haryana was for was the first state which activated the process of issuing e-passes, which was a necessity at that point in time. And the reason it could do it almost overnight was because presence of a system like Antodhya Saral through which, through which any new scheme or any new service could be easily configured. So it came in handy during the COVID uh, uh, lockdown phases. Today, two and a half years into Saral, 36% uh, of the total applications that are coming in the state for any scheme and service are coming through online mode. That means their citizens are sitting at home and applying. And only the remaining two thirds are coming through the common services center and the Saral Kendras. So that means the proportion of online application is significant and which is, which is a positive sign. And even going forward, Saral is now being integrated with the family ID program in the state or the Parivar Bhechan Patra, PPP. It's been integrated with that. And the vision is that going forward, any citizen when applying uh, for any scheme on services through onto the Saral, will have all the information prefetched through the family ID data because if the person has a valid family ID, all the information and also all of the, the documents which will be lying in DigiLocker will be prefetched with the aspiration of providing over the counter or instantaneous approval of schemes and services. So I come to the portal, I apply, I fill in some details, my documents are fetched and instantaneously I get an approval. There's no backend processing time that's required for schemes and services, which will be really a first in the country. Given all of this, uh, Saral has gotten a lot of accolades, a lot of awards uh, over the last couple of years, including the President's Award uh, for the best digital governance initiative uh, across all states and UTs in the country. But more importantly, it has really brought ease, convenience in the lives of citizens in the state. All the 2.7 crore citizens in the state have benefited in some shape and form from Antodhya Saral. Thank you. Yeah.